Here's a summary of what's new in BikeCAD 7.1. We have enhanced control of the seat post, including the shape of the clamp, the size of the clamp, and the distance at the top of the post that can't be sunk into the seat tube. You can also save seat posts to a library, as you can with other components. The library of forks now has several new Fox-style suspension forks for both 26-inch wheels and 29-inch wheels. The data includes crown measurements as well. The arrow bar dialog box has been updated to include several additional dimensions, including the width between the pads and the width between the grips. The fit advisor can now recommend values for the end of handlebar reach from saddle, the end of handlebar drop from saddle, as well as the arrow pad reach from saddle and arrow pad drop from saddle. Also new to the Fit Advisor is this Preview button. This button shows you a highlighted preview of the recommended change. In this case we see the recommended crank length. It'll also show us the saddle height, seat tube length, handlebar position. When you click Apply to BikeCAD Model, in many cases the Fit Advisor will actually change the frame geometry in order to achieve the desired dimension, as you can see here with saddle setback. BikeCAD actually changed the seat angle to give me the saddle setback of zero millimeters. I could undo that and seek alternative approaches to achieving that same saddle setback. For example, I could change the seat post setback. This forces the saddle further ahead and achieves the desired setback without having to change the frame. If we take a look at a road bike, for example, the preview might be suggesting that we need to move our handlebars further forward. Well, the fit advisor will do that by lengthening our frame, but again, I could undo that change and instead just change the stem length to get close to the area. We can move on to handlebar drop and again, by adjusting the stem and possibly the spacers in the headset, we can achieve the desired handlebar position. We have several new dimensions, including various stack and reach measurements to the arrow bar pads and bullhorn bar ends. We also have the tail of the saddle to the handlebar and the bottom bracket to the bottom of the head tube measured directly. The notes dialog box appears like this now with larger text areas for the title block notes and general notes. You can also drag this dialog box to give you even more room to write. In the past, the default line weight in BikeCAD has been one millimeter thick. That generally works very well in the default view and when printing, drawings, and exporting PDFs. But if you do export a full-scale PDF and look at the drawing scaled one-to-one, -one, you may find that the lines are a little too fat. So what you can do now is go into the paint dialog box and change the line thickness. If you were printing a full scale PDF, you may select 0.1 millimeter line thickness. And as you can see when you generate the PDF again, it'll have much thinner line weight. If for any reason you need thicker lines, you can achieve them as well. Another change that relates to outlines is this menu here that controls the corner appearance. You can see the effect that this is having on the down tube logo. This is particularly useful when choosing fonts such as this. In the past they would have appeared very spiked, but by changing the corner treatment we can get a much nicer appearance. When printing a landscape drawing such as this, in the past, what you'd have to do is go to File, Print, but then go into your Printer Properties settings and change the page orientation from Portrait to Landscape. Now the trouble with that was that certain Mac operating systems didn't actually have that ability to change the orientation after the fact. So to accommodate everyone, BikeCAD 7.1 now automatically rotates the orientation of the drawing if necessary. So if you have a landscape orientation drawing like we have here, all you have to do is just go File, Print, OK. As you can see in this resulting XPS document, 
bike head has rotated the orientation for us. You can set printing margins by going to View, Customize, and inputting the print margin in millimeters in this text field here. If you've used BikeCAD before, you'll be familiar with templates and how you can save templates in the form of dimensions, bikes, paint schemes, and displays of various arrangements of elements. A new enhancement of 7.1 is the addition of the model template. The model template includes information about dimensions, bikes, paints, display, notes, photos, and title block all rolled into one. The only information that is not included in a model template is the rider information. But with the model template you could save your entire catalog of stock bikes. So for example we could have our large men's time trial machine appear on the screen with dimensions and a certain paint scheme. Or we could open the medium women's time trial machine. Again, with a collection of dimensions, a paint scheme, and bike information. If you find yourself using templates a lot, what you can do is go to View, Customize, and uncheck the box that says the template should be opened in the File menu. Save those settings, and next time you launch BikeCAD, your templates will appear in the top menu. So again, you can draw from your templates of bikes, your templates of paint schemes, your display templates, and so on. BikeCAD has also now been translated into Indonesian, Korean, and Polish.